One of the most difficult things I struggled in drawing architecture when I started illustrating professionally was drawing elevations of buildings. Normally, when you are proposing designs of buildings, orthographic representation of the design is created for easier understanding of the dimensions, which are the floor plans, site development plan, and normally that which shows the X, Y dimensions. Elevations and sections would show the information for levels of the building, usually indicated also with text and dimensions. So you may ask, why not just do designs in 3D like Revit or any other programs? Or can we just use perspectives to represent them? Well, perspective drawings are great for anyone to understand or study the outcome of the spaces and places in a way we actually see and experience them. Perspective drawing would not be so useful in describing buildings technically for designers or engineers who will be working on the actualization of the construction. You can't measure perspective drawings with a scale ruler to give you the information for depth or width or height on paper. Working with uh, digital 3D programs help in understanding during the design phase, but then you will need to supply the orthographic drawings eventually. You know, the floor plans, elevation section, detailed drawings, and engineering details with all the specifications to help quantify the materials and building methods. In this video tutorial, we are talking about how to generate the flat frontal representations depiction on one face of an existing building using photographs because we can't go out. Yes, that sounds difficult. The secret really is finding the correct references and perceiving proportions. Reasons of drawing elevations. Why do this at all? This is more for analysis and eventually an artistic or semi-technical architectural depiction of an existing building. One of my fellow architect faculty and fellow urban sketcher Cesar Ramirez puts it, quote, Elevation drawing based on reference images is a good exercise for freehand drawing, developing an eye for proportion and, event and improving one's observation skills. Through the drawing process, it engages you to have a better understanding of the construction methods used as well as architectural elements and style introduced in the building's design, end quote. You can use elevation drawings format for creating art pieces with correct proportions, fine line drawing, color, and proper shades and shadows, they can look quite beautiful. So, Cesar happens to be involved with heritage building projects or conservation and entails him observing and document in freehand drawing and use elevation drawings to create the initial observation prior to engineering surveys. His process for this type of drawing are as follows, and let me follow the process in a demonstration of my own. Number one, establish parameters, or in this case, framework or overall proportions first. This includes the facade width by measuring in Google Maps, floor level, and overall height. It is important to set the parameters or framework first so you can lock in the elevation boundaries. So check. Number two, once you have established the facade width, you can now come up with a more accurate estimate of the building heights by, by proportioning through referencing on available photos of the structure. Check. Number three, from here, you can divide the facade into smaller areas since most buildings, especially heritage buildings, have a more traditional facade design. You can look for columns or frames that divide the facade vertically. Check. And lastly, number four, after setting up these parameters or framework, you can now start with detailing the elements of the building. Throughout this process, be particular with alignment and size of the parts. Apply the standard sizes of wood, windows, doors, and other elements to achieve a good overall elevation drawing. So check. So the above method actually checks out as what I did for the Concho House elevation. But um, let's go more in depth 
with the steps. So one, the Google Maps reference is normally scaled more or less, so I can trust it. Now, what I do is I switch to satellite view, zoom in as much as possible to the target building that on now, now you can see the top view. And normally you can see the provided scale bar. In this zoom setting, it shows the concho house with a scale bar with five meters. Make sure that when you print out the image, the scale bar of the Google map should be included. Now, if you don't have access to a printer, you can just use the image on the screen of the computer monitor. Using a post-it or any small piece of paper with a straight edge, replicate the five meter scale bar and start measuring the roof edge. In this case, the measurement of the roof front edge is 14 meters. So step number two, it would be always easier if you can get a picture reference facing the facade of the elevation you are drawing. So I determined that the eye level is usually about 1.5 to 1.6 meters when somebody is taking a picture normally. This is important because I can determine or intelligently guess the height level based on this information. To determine the width, I have to guess the relative measurement with an established eye level of 1.5 meters. You can get cues from vehicles or heights of doors and uh, window sills. Like window sills would be like 0.9 to 1 meter. Doors can be uh, roughly about 2 meters. So the eye level would therefore be something like 3 fourths of the height of a door. Now you can approximate the height of the levels using again a small piece of paper and mark up the relative vertical line. So in the case of my, this example, I have determined that the facade of the house is about 6 meters high, 12 meters wide, and with a 14 meter front roof edge. The eaves of the roof are usually 1.2 meters from the wall, and I have just rounded off the offset from the walls to something like 1 meter, just to simplify things. So relatively, it's, it's roughly about two squares of six by six side by side. So it's six meters by 12 meters. Take note that the roof can be as high as one floor level and in some cases even more. Old houses usually would have steeper roofs. Here I am showing you a clear markup image of what I what the determined measurements are. These are approximated, of course, but I am making sure to show that the result to be as proportioned as possible. You can further subdivide the grids per meter interval if you want. And then step three, with the proportions or dimensions determined being a facade wall measuring 12 meters by six meters in height, start light penciling the edges of the building. Start with the general shape. So I am just drawing two six by six meters side by side with a markup image reference establish the levels divisions of the walls and panels here there is a distinct three bay facade with each bay further subdivided into six segments four if you have roof eaves they would be again be one meter from the walls and the pitch of the angle of this roof is roughly about 30 degrees. Step 5, now you can start drawing the ink lines or details once you are sure about where things are. A thin or 0.3 m millimeter felt tip pen is recommended. In this demonstration, the most important take is how to determine dimensions of the facade. Spend a good time on solving this first and then when and only then draw the details once you are sure of the proportions or the framework. Step six, place in the shades and shadows. Best if you can find pictures showing this clearly. Shades and shadows give cues of depth and the form of the building. I eventually illustrated the concho house by drafting the line edges or, um, and rendering it with watercolor. It was drawn with a 1 to 100 scale this takes up more time as this is more formal than the initial freehand drawing I first made to establish this to establish the correct proportions. 
things to keep in mind when you are drawing elevations. This is a flat frontal representation depiction on one face of the building. Unlike how you would actually perceive the uh, building in perspective, elevation drawings have no diminishing nor converging lines nor foreshortening elements. This is straight up like a rectilinear drawing of the front facade, like how you would see them on proposed building drawing sets. Meaning, the building's horizontal and vertical lines appear as true horizontal and true vertical lines. So, this is only one example. You can use the principles in the making of just about any other buildings that are existing. I have used the steps to illustrate heritage buildings by just understanding their proportions. I hope that this tutorial has helped you in understanding how to determine the proportions of buildings for drawing them in the elevation format. So until the next video, goodbye for now.